Hey guys, welcome back. This is Langchain Quick Start Guide Part 2. If you haven't watched Part 1 already, I'd recommend that you go ahead and watch it. I will put the link in the description below. Now let's get started. Make sure that you have Langchain installed, OpenAI installed, and Google search results installed. We're going to use Google search results later on when we discuss chains, so that's why we are installing that here. I already have these three installed in my environment, so I'm not going to run these cells, but you will definitely have to if you don't have these installed. Let's move on to the next step. Obviously, we're going to need API keys to access OpenAI as well as SERP API. So make sure your uh, environment is set up with these keys, OpenAI underscore API key, as well as SERP API underscore API key. I've already run these cells so that I don't have to show you my API keys, but um, you know you need to put the correct API keys in here and run these cells. We now load the chat OpenAI wrapper from chat underscore models. The difference between LLM model and chat models is the way we interact with them. LLMs, we can interact with LLMs via text messages. Whereas with chat models, we interact with them via messages, chat messages for inputs and outputs. The different type of messages are AI messages, human messages, and system messages. We can load these from langchain.schema. Let's run the cell. Once we've loaded the messages, we now create the chat. And then we can pass a human message to it. And the way to set value to the human message is say content equal to whatever our message needs to be. In this case, it's going to be translate this sentence from English into French and we, and we give it a sentence. It's a beautiful day. Let's run this. And we have a response back. It says, c'est une belle journée. I hope I'm saying that right. But that's our AI message back to us. And if we were using uh, the GPT 3.5 turbo model or the GPT 4 model, we could send the chat multiple messages, like in this case. So we are setting up a system message uh, to be your helpful assistant that translates English to French and the human message to it's a beautiful day. And then we'll call a uh, chat on messages. And we get the same response back, set in belle journée. So far, so good. Next, we can also get completions in a batch back. So we can do that by sending batch of messages together. So in this case, we are sending two messages over uh, one of them is about translating, it's a beautiful day. And the second one is let's go for a hike. As we run this cell, we will see that we will get two different responses. So if you see the first text response uh, in the LLM result, set in belle journée. And then you see the second chat generation text Allons faire un randonnée. We can query the LLM result for various types of uh, variables. In this case, we can query it for uh, token usage. And you can see that the total number of tokens used in this case is 73, includes uh, 59 prompt tokens and 14 um, responses. We can use prompt templates with chat models as well. In this case, the chat prompt template, the system message prompt template, and human message prompt template. Let's first, first set up the chat. Next, we are going to set up our prompt templates. The first is the system message uh, prompt template. For that, we are going to first set up the system message uh, as the text where we are expecting the input to be input language. Uh, and the input also to be the output language. And then we set the system message prompt to be a system message prompt template, and we pass the previously defined system template to this call. 
Similarly, we set up the human message prompt template the same way. We see text is the input for this prompt template. We now set up the chat prompt template and we do so using the system message prompt template and the human message prompt template that we set up in the previous steps. We are finally ready to call our chat object with our chat prompt templates. And to the chat prompt template, we are going to provide the input language as English, output language as French, and text as it's a beautiful day. And we see over here that it comes back with il fait beau aujourd'hui, which is a variation of the previous translation that it gave us. So great. Now we move on to the concept of chains. It's very similar to how it's used in the LLM models. Uh, so in this first section, in this cell, we are looking at first setting up the chat uh, along with the chat prompt templates. You will notice that I've imported LLM chain from Langchain because we need to use the chain functionality. I'll run this cell now. Now we set up our chain as chain equal to LLM chain. We're gonna pass it our chat as well as our chat prompt template. And when we run uh, the chain, we are going to pass all the parameters that it needs, which is the input language to be English, uh, the output language to be French, and the text that we want it to translate. As I run the cell, you will notice that it's retrying. Looks like GPT was busy and LLM had to retry, but it did come back to us with the response. It says, il fait beau aujourd'hui. Now we get to the topic of agents, which is extremely important and it'll allow us to build really powerful applications. Agents are used to determine what action to take and in which order. Uh, we use tools for performing specific actions. So in order to do all of that, we need to load um, different things such as load tools, initialize agent, and agent type. All right, the next few steps are um, simple, which is setting up the chat, um, and then we are going to set up the tools that we are going to use as part of this demonstration. So in, over here, we are going to use SERP API as well as LLM math. Now that we've done that, we set up our agent with the initialize underscore agent call. And to this call, we are passing the tools that we previously set up, the chat that we previously set up, and the agent type is chat zero shot react description. And we're gonna set verbose equal to true because we want to see the chain of thought uh, for our agent. Next, we run the agent with the following two questions. How tall is the Niagara Falls? And what would its height be if it was two times as tall? All right, now let's watch our agent get to work. Okay, looks like our answer is 650 feet. Let's walk through this. The first thought it has is I need to use a search engine to figure out the height and then use the calculator. So the first action is search. The action input is Niagara Falls height. It gets the response back as 325 feet. Next thought it has is I need to uh, calculator, use a calculator to double this height. So the action really is calculator and the action input is 325 multiplied by two. And in this case, it's calling LLM math and getting the answer back to be 650. So the thought it has is I know the final answer now. Then it prints out the answer to say Niagara Falls is 325 feet tall, and if it were twice as tall, it would be 650 feet. Okay, so the last topic that we're gonna to touch on is the concept of memory for chat models. And in order to implement this concept, we use two things. One is the conversation chain, as well as the conversation buffer memory. So let's load those with these commands and then set up our prompt template. We're now going to call the conversation chain with the conversation buffer memory object, which we will instantiate over here. Memory equal to conversation buffer memory, uh, return messages equal to true. And here we are setting up the conversation chain with memory, prompt, and the chat object. 
We are now ready to predict the next output of the conversation. Let's pass it. Hello, how are you? It says, um, hello, I am an AI language model, so I don't have feelings, but I'm functioning properly, ready to assist you. How may I help you today? All right, let's pass it something else. It's a beautiful day. Going out for a hike would be nice, or are any good hikes in Catskills? So it responds back with, Catskills is a great place to hike, and it makes some suggestions, which is great. And then we continue the conversation. I say, thanks, tell me about yourself. And it's going to come back to us with some more response. And you'll notice now as we print out the memory object, it is going to have the uh, history of our conversation. Okay, so this concludes the part two of our Langchain Quick Start Guide. Subscribe to the channel and like this video for more content like this. Thanks a lot and talk to you soon. Bye.